welcome back to the Crypto Report. I'm Black C, and I have another video for you guys. Today, I want to talk about Solana, Bitcoin, the entire crypto market cap as a whole, because we have seen quite the sell-off overnight, and I want to let you guys know, is it time to buy? Am I buying? What am I buying? We're going to hop into it. So first, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Let's hop into this video. So first things first, guys, over on Twitter at 333 Black C, you can follow me there. I said... The three pillar strategy excels in times like these real estate, equity slash crypto, cash. Time to buy now. We'll get a clear picture by market close. Personally, right now, I am nibbling on some things. I was swapping like crazy last night, trying to get the assets that have fallen significantly versus Solana, vice versa. De-risked a little bit just in case we see further continuation. I'm going to show you my key price levels on Solana and Bitcoin. Bitcoin is holding up pretty well right now, but we're going to go through this. So first things first, Bitcoin is trading almost back above $55,000. Guys, we wicked below. I can't believe I'm saying this. Below 50000 We were trading in $49,000 territory. Absolutely insane. Ethereum came all the way down to about $2,100. Very, very, very key support levels. Honestly, we kind of had just a big leverage wipeout across the board. All the longs are liquidated, uh, especially even in the traditional market. Leverage, people are getting margin calls today. It's going to be a, a messy, messy day. Uh, Bitcoin dominance trading at 56% when you exclude stablecoins, 58%. 8% guys. 58%. I do think that we'll probably rally above to say 60% sooner rather than later. It really depends on when Bitcoin makes another impulse move. So let's take a look at Solana. Solana trading at $134 right now. I will be honest with you guys. I did have some, did have some stop losses at about $117. We came below that. Yes, we did, and you can see it's a big, big wick. Because, guys, $117 on Solana was a very, very key level. I did personally think if we break below 117 that we could be heading much lower to, say, $80 around this level right about here. So I had a stop loss. But, guys, keep in mind, I've been buying Solana since $8. I'm up very, very significantly. I still hold a large position of Solana. But it was just a little bit of a hedge to de-risk. And what do you know? You know, when you have stop losses, that's the game you play. You get tapped by your stop loss, and then you come back up. Uh, that's why leverage trading can be very, very risky, guys. It can be very, very risky. Uh, but that being said, you know, when you have a couple thousand uh, Solana and you're, you're, you have size in a trade, you want to make sure that it doesn't all get wiped out. So there's pros and cons. That being said, I do think that there is a chance that we still spill below 117, but we really need to be paying attention to the traditional market today, the S&P 500, and be taking a look more deeply into Bitcoin. But I do want to show the Solana slash ETH pairing. It's absolutely insane. I'm seeing some crazy, crazy bearishness on Ethereum saying that it's useless tech now. I mean, as always, you have the Solana bulls and the Ethereum bulls, and they, they clash. It's pretty funny, but um, that's why I have both. Uh, you got to hedge your bets. But right now, it's pretty crazy, guys. We, we broke above all-time high levels for the Solana versus Ethereum chart. Pretty incredible. We did wick back below because Ethereum is getting a little bit of life back to it, but still, uh, pretty crazy to see a, a new all-time high. I like Solana. If we do continue this cycle, and I know that sounds crazy, the if, I should say when we do continue this cycle, I think the people that are holding Solana are going to be rewarded significantly. That's why I'm still a Solana bull and I hold a significant amount. So let's talk about Bitcoin. Bitcoin, Bitcoin, Bitcoin. Right now we are turning into quite a broadening wedge. I've seen some people talk about this. We did have a, a it's funny how it works because we were in a trend line basically a very very significant support level and once it gets broken oh now it's a broadening wedge you know um you can make 
and draw different shapes all day, every day, the deeper you look into charts. But there is some substance to a broading wedge. I've seen this formation happen and play out in the S&P 500 during the big dump we had back in 2020 and 2019 around then. And we are seeing something very, very similar play out that we saw in the S&P 500. And you can see, you know, we came down here. The, the S&P 500 broading wedge was much more, uh, it had much more of an intense angle on it. But this is very, very similar to what we saw in the S&P 500. And you know what comes after this, to be honest, guys. It, it usually breaks out to the upside. Um, but I do think that we're in for a little bit more time here. Uh, either we V-shape right out of this and break above 70,000 and turn this resistance into support. That's what we saw, how the S&P 500 broadening wedge played out. We dipped down, we wicked up, broke above it. Came like this and set up our next leg to the upside. But if we bounce off this, get rejected off of 70,000, I don't want to see that, guys. I think that that would be the beginning of a much longer correction. And you know, there's a lot of pain in this market. The yen crashing because they put an interest rate on it. Japan rug pulling the market, basically. People need to liquidate their $4 trillion of assets that they have borrowed against yen. They're worried about not being able to pay it back, and it's causing a cascading effect. You have that. You have the conflict going on in the world. There's a lot of uncertainty right now. And honestly, Bitcoin is holding up relatively well, considering, all things considered. But your altcoins and the very risk on assets, they're getting decimated. That's for sure. Like, I can't believe that my uh, stop loss got hit here at about 117. And, you know, it, it, it is unfortunate because we're wicking back up, but but I am leaning to the idea that unless we see some swift action by the Federal Reserve, which is not really the good thing to do, but we'll probably see them do something like that because it is an election year, then I do expect that we could probably make our way back down to this level And because wicks love to get filled. They just love to get filled. That's just the name of the game, especially over the weekend. I could see that playing out. Bitcoin needs to make some decisions here, guys. Needs to make some decisions here. I don't really see us going straight to the moon from here. I, I don't. I think that there is some big structure that is getting broken a little bit right now. I wouldn't be surprised to see the weekly spill over a little bit. We have the red dot market cipher. I talked about that in my video yesterday. We're looking at the weekly. Last time this happened, we saw a 50% drawdown. I think it was more like a 65% drawdown. A 65% drawdown from here is, wow, it's, it's actually even lower than that. That's pretty crazy. 65% drawdown would be basically bringing us to $20, $23,000. Okay, that, that, that's very significant. Do I think that's going to happen? Probably not, but I am leaning towards the idea that we're... we're Need be looking to the downside a little bit here, guys, unless we see some big moves from the Federal Reserve. Uh, that being said, guys, that's all I got. If you like this type of content, please hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel right now. Please check out some fantastic referral links down below. We have a $5,000 sign-on bonus to Blowfin, a $4,100 sign-on bonus to Femex. All you have to do is click those links, deposit, trade a little bit. You can get a bunch of free bonus money. Also, check out my Instagram at 333BlackC. If we can reach 500 followers by next Sunday, I will give away $1,000. I like to give back during these trying times when there's big sell-offs, when there's blood in the streets. Hopefully, you can win the $1,000 and buy some crypto or buy some equities. I do want to say right now, I said at the beginning of the video, what am I buying right now? I am looking at some equities. I've been layering into the S&P 500. I know that's very conservative and boring. I've bought some Ethereum, just a little bit nibbling, 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 nothing crazy. I'm not layering in. And you know, at the beginning of this video, I said, this is why the three pillar strategy excels in times like these, because when you do get that inevitable sell off, you have cash to deploy. And we're deploying. We're getting ready. I have a, a big chunk that is getting situated that I'm probably going to be layering into some more equities uh, to see, hopefully, if... I, I won't say hopefully. I won't say hopefully. But if the market does keep coming down on the traditional market, there's going to be a little bit more blood. There's going to be more 
opportunities, guys. Uh, this reminds me a lot of the capitulation event we saw back in 2019. And that's when I made a lot of money, when everyone was panicking, when those lockdowns were happening. I was buying Tesla. I was buying NVIDIA. I made some good trades. And I feel that same type of vibe going on right now in the markets of the world. So I'm taking advantage of it. I'm cautious, but I'm taking advantage of it. That's all I got, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Be safe out there. Don't panic. Don't freak out. Everything's going to be okay. Bye.